If you want to get the maximum amount of profit from a website, you need to get as much traffic as you can. If you want to get the maximum amount of traffic to your website, you need to get to the top of Google. And if you want to get to the top of Google, you need SEO or search engine optimization. Search engine optimization is the process of optimizing a website so that Google will be more likely to index it and ensure that it ranks highly for the most relevant keywords and phrases. For example, if you have a website that sells hats, then you might try to get it to rank for the phrase buy hats online. To do this, you will go through an optimization process that would involve both on-site and off-site strategies. With any luck, you would eventually be able to get your website to the top of the SERPs, that's the search engine results pages for that term, and thereby attract a huge amount of traffic. More importantly, that traffic would not just be from random visitors, but would instead be from specific people who are looking for hats. Better yet, those people will be looking for hats at the very point they came to your website. Yeah, why else would they search for hats? which means they're ready to buy, and it should only take a small push to get them to make that decision. SEO can be a slow-going process, but it's still possible to climb the ranks and get your website to a point where it will start getting more and more organic traffic from searches. SEO essentially works by attempting to second-guess the algorithms used by Google to decide which sites to index and where to rank them. Google works by using bots, an index, and an algorithm. The bots, also known as robots or spiders, are small pieces of code designed to head out onto the web and look for content. They read web pages and they add that content to a massive index which Google can use as a reference. From there, Google will then use an algorithm to identify which content in that index is relevant to which search and which is offering value to the end user. Ultimately, the aim of Google is to help people find interesting content that will be relevant to what they're looking for. This involves a lot of factors and the algorithm will look at how many links the content has, how visitors behave on that website and the use of key phrases within the content. If a word or phrase is repeated often enough, then it is possible to deduce that said word or phrase is likely to be the subject matter and thus should come up in searches for matching terms. SEO basically works by predicting and guessing how the algorithm works, because no one can be completely sure, and then using that information in order to engineer your website to get the maximum number of hits. It means gaming the system, and this in turn can allow you to trick Google into believing that your site should be number one. Of course, it's not quite that simple though, and actually, as we dig deeper, we'll see there are other more efficient ways of looking at SEO. Apart from anything else, Google is constantly updating its algorithms, usually with words beginning with P, like penguin, panda and pigeon, and that means second-guessing Google can get you into trouble. Being effective at SEO means having an up-to-date understanding of how it works and knowing the core principles that underpin the different strategies. That's where this video series comes in. Keep watching and you'll learn which old, outdated strategies you need to avoid, how to work with Google to get the very best results, and how to future-proof your site for upcoming changes. This is the modern guide to SEO for modern marketers and site owners. This is your SEO Bible and your key to unlocking incredible success on the web. We're going to start this series with a little history lesson. Why? Because understanding how SEO used to work, how it has progressed, and what you now need to avoid is a very good way of creating context and helping you to understand what SEO means today. When SEO was first born, Google's algorithm was a lot simpler and manipulating it to your own ends was a lot easier as a result. Back then, Google looked at two key factors in determining its rankings. Those factors were keyword density and links profile. Your links profile, also called your backlinks profile, is essentially determined by how many links you have pointing to your website coming from other sites. This serves two important roles. Firstly, 
links help Google's robots to find your website. Bots crawl the web by reading content and following links from one site to another. If you have a link on a site that Google has already indexed, then this will allow it to find yours and add it to the network. At the same time, Google views links as testimony, assuming that a website would only link to another website if it thought said website was good and had something valuable to offer its users. Google would also assume that if you have links from 20 websites about hats, then your site is probably going to be about hats as well, especially if the anchor text has your search phrase in it. The other factor was keyword density. Keyword density meant how many times your website would repeat the words that you were trying to rank for. The more content you had and the more often you repeated the same phrase throughout that content, the more likely you would ultimately be to get ranked for that search term and to show up high in the SERPs. Of course, it was also important to research the keywords and to make sure they were actually being searched for. For this, marketers could use Google's keyword research tool in order to check the volume of searches and to get an idea about how much competition there was. A savvy optimizer would then be able to look at terms with the highest search volumes and lowest amount of competition and then try to rank for those phrases specifically. This simple algorithm makes a lot of sense in theory and should have helped Google to find content that people would be looking for quickly and easily. It would read the content in order to see which site was the most relevant for that term and it would look at which sites had the most links from other websites. But the problem was people eventually cottoned on to the way this worked and began to take advantage of it. Search engine optimizers realized that all they had to do to get to the top of Google was to create as many links and as much content with keywords as possible. So webmasters began to spam link directories and content farms, submitting their links everywhere they possibly could. They began to pay other content creators to place links on their pages, and they would also trade links. Most websites ended up with a massive list of links somewhere on one of their pages, and these would just be other random sites that had contacted them and asked to exchange links. Worse was what started to happen to content. In a bid to create as much content as possible and to use the keywords as often as possible, creators began to churn out content in huge quantities while giving no regard to quality. They also began using keyword stuffing, which essentially means repeating keywords over and over again, even when it doesn't make any sense. A typical website from the early 2000s might read, Are you looking to buy hats online? then you have come to the right Buy Hats Online website. This is the best place to buy hats online for anyone who wants to buy hats online Carolina. As you can see, this content is completely nonsensical and will be highly off-putting for any real visitors looking to make a purchase. And then it got worse still. Creators began to actively steal content from other site owners and spin it in order to make it unique. Now, Google won't rank duplicate content, otherwise it would risk making every search result identical. So, content spinning, as it came to be called, essentially means that you're taking an article or a blog post and using software in order to exchange many of the words for synonyms. So, a sentence that read, These are the softest, warmest and most attractive hats on the net, would become, These are the most comfortable, most insulating and most beautiful hats on the web. And because the site owner didn't have to write that content themselves, this meant they could publish thousands of posts in a short space of time and bomb Google. Well, that's the theory at least. The reality is that, unfortunately, most spinners do this instead. These is the squittyish, hottest and very best beautiful hats on the fishing net. Again, it's just gibberish. So, by placing thousands of links on other sites, using their keywords as the anchor text, and by filling their sites with tons of useless content, website owners were able to get themselves to the top spot of Google. This system was so easy to abuse that some people could even get completely unrelated websites to the top of specific SERPs against the owner's will. 
you could make it so that searching for big idiot will bring up a picture of your friend, for example. This was called a Google bomb. Obviously, this started to make a mess of Google's results, and so Google had to adapt and get smarter. Because of all the abuse we talked about in the last video, Google had to change and adapt to maintain its spot as the number one search provider. And to do that, it had to clamp down hard on those who were gaming the system and penalize sites that were cheating to get to the top spot. It did this by looking for obviously spammy strategies and de-indexing or downgrading the sites. So sites with keywords in their URL no longer enjoyed the same advantage. Sites with huge numbers of inbound links from low-quality websites were de-indexed. Sites caught buying links were de-indexed. Sites that stuffed keywords were severely punished. Sites that have lots of backlinks with the same anchor text were treated as highly suspect, and the list goes on and on. Meanwhile, Google started to show preference towards sites that were longer, that linked out to other quality resources, which previously would have hurt your SEO, and more. These changes came in the form of algorithm updates, which had recognizable animal names and which got a lot of press from the internet marketing community at the time. These were Penguin, which was designed to reduce the effectiveness of unnatural backlinks, and Panda, which was designed to favor sites that looked high quality. Google doesn't want a website owner to be able to artificially climb its SERPs. Rather, Google wants websites to climb the ranks only when they're genuinely valuable and popular with the audience. It wants to see natural, organic links that you haven't paid for, and it wants to see deep, relevant, and interesting content. The old techniques that were once used to spam Google became known as black hat SEO, and the industry entered a dark period. It's hard to overstate just what the impact of these algorithms changes had on the SEO industry at the time, and on countless other industries as well. These changes ended up completely de-indexing massive websites overnight. Sites that had followed conventional wisdom to get to the top spot on popular certs were now completely de-indexed, cutting off the vast majority of their traffic and sales. This led many to proclaim that SEO was dead, that it was no longer possible to game the system because you would be penalized for buying links or for stuffing keywords. And even if someone could break Google's new algorithm and work out a new way to game the system, it would only be a matter of time until Google changed its algorithms again. The industry as a whole was in trouble and SEO became a dirty word. Many people felt that SEO and black hat SEO were synonymous and more and more people began to turn to social media for marketing, with the likes of Facebook and Twitter massively on the rise. But was SEO really dead? Not at all. It was just going through a metamorphosis. SEO is not the techniques we use to get our sites to the top of Google. SEO is simply the objective of getting to the top of Google. Any technique you use to try to get more attention from Google could be considered SEO. So if Google wants us to create a high quality website, then creating a high quality website becomes SEO. The hard part is just unraveling what Google's idea of a high quality website should look like. Keyword research is still useful, for example, but we now know that Google doesn't want us to overly stuff our websites with those search terms. Instead, the recommendation hovers at around 1% to 2% keyword density. So if you write a long article and include the search term a few times, that should be enough, as long as it's also in your code a little or in your file name. It's also worth noting that Google looks for keywords in specific places in your content and gives those extra value. Google will consider it a strong sign if your keywords are used in your headers or in the first paragraph of your content. Google also looks for synonyms, though, and related language, which is something that we'll discuss more later on. And it no longer cares about how many links you can get. It cares far more about how high quality those links are. So if your links are from lots of highly trusted websites, then you'll find it does great things for your ranking. 
Google is also now looking at things like bounce rates, how long someone spends on your website. And it's looking at how your site renders on mobile and how quickly it loads. You can now get penalized for typos and mistakes. And Google is also looking at social sharing signs. If you have lots of plus ones from Google+, for example, then this can have a large positive impact. In short, Google is looking for signs of quality, relevance, and great design. At the end of the day, Google does not care about you as a content creator. You're not Google's customer. Google's customer is the end user who searches for a key phrase because they want to get relevant information or find the answer to a question. So if you forget the specifics and instead make your aim to deliver high quality content consistently targeted towards a specific subject matter, then your goals will be aligned with Google. That means Google will want to share your content with its users. And it means that each update and change Google makes should actually benefit you as a creator. This is what good SEO is about today. Forget trying to trick Google and instead think about your users and think about working with Google.